Good morning and welcome to Thursday of the 10th week of Ordinary Time and it's the Feast of St. Barnabas the Apostle. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who decreed that St. Barnabas, a man filled with faith in the Holy Spirit, should be set apart to convert the nations, grant that the gospel of Christ, which he strenuously preached, may be faithfully proclaimed by word and by deed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated for the Bible readings the Church has chosen for today's celebration. First reading. Barnabas was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and with faith. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart. For he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith, and a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to Tyros to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people. And it was in Antioch that the, the disciples were first called Christians. Now there were in the church in, at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menin, who was a close friend of Herod at the Terioch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. Then, completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and set them off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp the melodious song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Go and teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always until the end of the world. El Señor esté con ustedes. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, or whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever says to his brother, Racha, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. Whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and then recall your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first, be reconciled with your brother, then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court with him. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you'll be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Well, I introduced the Mass by telling you this is the um, memorial of St. Barnabas the Apostle. And if you know one of the lists of the apostles, you wait, no, wait, he's not on that list. Uh, actually, the word apostle applied to the 12, but then quickly spread uh, throughout the church to leaders in the church. And Barnabas was a very early leader. He was from Cyprus. He sold his land there and placed the money from that sale at the foot of the disciples uh, to decide what to do with it. He quickly became a leader in the north, uh, which would be more diverse international communities and not simply Jewish communities. And uh, then when Paul had his conversion, uh, the Jerusalem people weren't really, really happy about having Paul around. I mean, he killed my mother, my brother, my sister. He hunted down people. He put them in jail. Uh, you know, we're not just going to simply forgive him. So uh, Barnabas invited Paul up north. And together they became a team uh, like all teams sometimes got along and sometimes didn't. But uh, they worked up there in Antioch, and until then they had been known as people of the way, the people of the way. So followers of Jesus were known as the people of the way. In Antioch they soon became called the Christians, the Christians. So uh, Barnabas had a great deal of prestige in the early church, very powerful figure uh, in a positive sense of that of power. Uh, there's even a gospel that appears about 150 years after him, about 100 years after him, uh, and it uh, says that he wrote it. So the church has never accepted that. Uh, so it's not in the Bible. But anyway, he did have such prestige. In the gospel today, um, it's about killing, it's about reconciliation. So if your brother has something against you, it's interesting, it's, it doesn't talk about if I have something against my brothers, but we'll let that go. So if my brother has something against me, I should leave my gift first at the altar before I go back to the altar. Well, there's only one altar, and that's Jerusalem. So let's say I'm coming from uh, Sunnyside to go to the only place, let's say it's in Los Angeles, and I get down partway, and I get down to, uh, let's say, Reading, and I say, well, wait, my brother in Sunnyside has something against me. I better go back and reconcile with him than go back to Los Angeles all the way. You know? So when Jesus says this, he's really talking about a huge thing. To stop in your tracks on your way to the sacrifice and go back and reconcile before you offer the sacrifice. And what he's trying to do, he's trying to get to the very grain of the, the heart of the matter. And he's looking at the attitudes that cause anger and that prevent reconciliation. And he's trying to underline the importance of that. So what, what uh, prevents reconciliation? Well, one is my, po my point of view is right. And I know it's right because I talked to so-and-so and he or she agreed with me. The problem with the dynamic of the third person is we usually look out for a person who's going to agree with us, who's going to support us. We're not going to go to so-and-so because, well, they're critical of us or they say I have these flaws or problems. They're going to blame it on me. I don't want that. I want someone who's going to say, hey, Tomas, you were right. So better to avoid the third person. Unless you're going to a third person who's very open, wise, and you're willing to understand and hear that wisdom. But the point is reconciliation. And what usually gets in the way is not so much the other person, it's our own stubbornness.
Let us pray that we can take the words of Jesus seriously about the importance of reconciliation, that we can look into our own hearts to see what are the obstacles and remove them. For this we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the hurt we cause other people and that we find ways to uh, reconcile and rebuild. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord let's pray for the wounds of racism and let's pray for our involvement in working against it. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord for the prayers of your hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord we offer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the preparation of the gifts. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, but through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, we have become to share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this sacrifice may become acceptable to God the Almighty. Sanctify with your blessing, we pray, O Lord, the offerings presented here, so that by your grace they may set us on fire with the flame of your love, by which St. Barnabas brought the light of the gospel to the nations. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for you built your church to stand firm in apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself that so from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At his command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, with, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Ignatius Loyola and Maria Rose de Rochelle with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good, through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer other, each other the sign of peace without touching. So. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of eternal life, we humbly implore you, Lord, that what we celebrate in sacramental signs on the memorial of the blessed apostle Barnabas, we may one day behold unveiled through Christ our Lord. And may the Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon us all and remain forever. Let us go forth to love, serve, and to reconcile. Thank you. Thank you.